yeah. But Bishop, well, when you made the decision, I know I'm, I'm just wondering, it's such a big decision and uh, we all know that this um, affects affects families a lot. And you said your parents were teachers. I suppose uh, in some ways they may have wanted you to become a teacher as, as well. How did you tell your parents? I mean, can, can you recall the moment or what was it, over dinner? Or did you subtly just... Uh, quoted scripture or something and then I mean how, how do you tell your parents? First of all both my parents uh, were teachers as you said uh, and they they never encouraged me to be a teacher that's that's one thing <laughs> uh, I guess not because the teaching profession is not I think it's one of the most noble professions but uh, perhaps they they want again uh, when I maybe going maybe step back a little bit when when I even mentioned to them uh, about actually rewind a bit uh, <laughs> going overseas uh, going overseas yeah. also was another decision that uh, I hesitated to make because in the background this call to the priesthood was 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 there within me but i never mentioned it to them and when the opportunity came for me to go overseas to study i hesitated for fear that i may lose this call to the priesthood so i found all kinds of excuses why i shouldn't go overseas you know i i wanted to stay back and uh, pursue pursue this call but uh Again, there were people who were uh, who influenced my decision also, and I remember one uh, one brother who mentioned that if you're not sure God is calling you to the priesthood, which I wasn't sure at that age, you know, seventeen, eighteen, uh, don't miss the opportunity to further your studies overseas. And I remember these words: if God wants you. He will get you sooner or later. So it was 12, 13 years later after the initial uh, from five thinking what I want to do, uh, even from six, yeah. And uh, till I made the decision to go into the seminary. 13 long years, but uh, every one of those years were, were discerning years for me. So it was, it was uh, not easy uh, breaking the news to my, to my, to my parents. Yeah. And this was when I came back, when I came back from overseas uh, and when I started working, I also bargained with God. Uh, while I was overseas, I was also, as, as I mentioned, uh, didn't want to go because of this call at the back of my mind. And while, while in the uni also, I was uh, going for vocation camps there. I went for a discernment camp because I wanted to be sure, I wanted to find out, is it a yes or a no uh, to the priesthood? Because I wanted to get on with life uh, to, to, to be sure. But after the discernment camp, I remember the only answer I got was, you are a student now, finish your studies. Huh? Don't worry, don't think about other things. Uh, do what you have to do, concentrate on your studies. And that was what I did. I could study in peace and could concentrate on my studies. And uh, I think that's... Uh, and then after my studies, I started to work and then Again, I asked God, is it time now? Or rather, he was asking me, are you ready now? And I said, no, let me work first. You know? After studies, let me work first. Let me work for two, three years to get some experience. What if I enter the priesthood and I leave halfway? I won't have any working experience, I, tell, I told myself. So always try to, be, to, to, to have your bases covered. So I worked two, three years, and then it became four years, and and again, 
God asking me. You, you, I've waited two, three years. What now? So I couldn't, I couldn't run anymore after 13 years of study, of working, and I had to, to make the choice. And, and uh, I don't know whether I mentioned it before, but when I broke the news to my parents, uh, mom was mom was saying if if you are happy i'll be happy for you right? this is what you want to do for that it was a bit more difficult uh, we had conversations before always about other people's sons becoming priests you know? mm -hmm. and you are very supportive with other people's sons but <laughs> when it comes to your own it's a different story <laughs> yeah. uh, so uh, I still remember when he, when I broke the news to him, when he had to sign my application form to the seminary. Yeah. Uh, I think he had a heart attack, uh, not not literally, but uh, <laughs> it was difficult for him uh, to, to 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 accept it, and uh, that was first year in the seminary. Uh, he didn't object. But uh, he wasn't he wasn't jumping for joy either. Yeah. But throughout the years, after a couple of years, when he saw me uh, serious about my, my, my priesthood or in the family, he he began to, to to warm up to it and began to accept accept the, the, my decision and. After a few years, he was one of my most ardent fans in the sense mm -hmm. he, would, he would advertise to strangers. Oh, my, my, my son is a priest and uh, I remember when he goes for his, his checkups in the hospital, he will start the conversation with the nurses who are taking his, his, his blood pressure, total strangers, mm -hmm. and he will be bragging my son is a priest and I feel so embarrassed at times <laughs> and not even worse my son is the Archbishop <laughs> <laughs>